What is up, everybody, and welcome back to the channel, Eric's House, and today, continuing the Saw Review Series, getting ready for Spiral from the Book of Saw coming out next month, and for all you Bon Jovi fans, do not worry, Slippery When Wet Review is coming in the next couple days, so look forward to that, but let's get into Saw 2, and this film I was absolutely hyped for after the amazing uh, film that I just reviewed, Saw. I couldn't believe how amazing that film was. I was already an absolute fanatic. And, of course, Saw 2, I was hyped for. I did have, you know, medium expectations. I didn't expect it to be anywhere near as good as the first. And to be honest, even though there are people who do prefer Saw 2 over the original, for me, no, I definitely prefer the original. This was, I wouldn't say a disappointment by any means. I'm going to get into it. But it definitely, in a lot of ways, didn't have the same same you know vibe the same just amazing uh whatever captured me here in that bathroom in that crazy situation with you know the two characters the two main characters from the original saw didn't really have that here instead we're dealing mainly with kind of a, a, a house almost a haunted house type feeling even though it's not technically a haunted house well it's haunted because of jigsaw's traps now it's haunted but we're dealing with a house with a bunch of people in there who are, you know, supposedly should work together, but, you know, there's always a couple of stupid ones, there's always a couple of crazy ones, there's always an asshole in there, and we have that situation. And it, and it felt at times a little bit generic, generic -y. you know, with those with so many of those movies, especially in the 90s, even Halloween had one with Halloween Resurrection, the worst film in the Halloween franchise. So you have this kind of, at times, you know, decent acting, but not great, and just... It just uh, at times it just kind of felt a little bit generic. Greetings and welcome. Right now you are breathing in a deadly nerve agent. <laughs> the only way out is to find an antidote. One is inside the safe. You all possess the combination in the back of your mind. But what wasn't generic about it though is when they had to deal with the traps, of course. The traps, as always, absolutely awesome uh, really original and this film actually kicks off and i think it was really important to do that with a separate kind of a, a a situation outside of the main plot where you get to see a guy who is in one of these it's a venus tra fly trap where his face is about to get completely crushed and uh, by the way there will be spoilers in these re saw reviews these films have been out for a while just so you know so there will be spoilers but the film opens with, you know, Vintage saw one of the traps and a guy, you know, listens to the tape recording and it's just a great way to open the film. And then we meet, of course, the main character in this one, played by Donnie Wahlberg and his name is Eric Matthews. Eric Matthews, the main character in this film, meeting up with Jigsaw. They're trying to take down Jigsaw. He's a cop, but, Jigsaw, but then he finds out Jigsaw's got his son and his son is one of the kids, teenagers, kids, you know, in that house and he can see him there on a tv on a, a little stream going on it would appears to be a live stream of all the people in that house so jigsaw says hey man what you gotta do is talk to me sit here and talk to me you will see your son again he's in a safe place he is secure it's all good uh obviously that's not gonna uh, work out now again when i went into this film medium expectations i really was wanting three things from this film I was wanting to get more of Jigsaw. Not that I wanted more in the first. The first film, I believe, is perfect as is with Jigsaw at the end with that massive twist. But now that we know who Jigsaw is, Tobin Bell, uh, his character, John Kramer, we know. Now I want to see more of this guy. I want to hear him talk. I want to get more development. I want to hear more of his backstory. I want to hear what's going on with Jigsaw. That's the first thing I wanted. Second thing I wanted, can you give me another crazy twist ending that I don't see coming at all? I want something crazy. I have no idea it's coming. Crazy but sensical, logical, not something just thrown out of left field that makes no sense whatsoever. So that's what I wanted. I want another amazing twist. I wanted to hear that Saw theme music come in, and I wanted that craziness at the end. And uh, the third thing that I really wanted was some not bomb traps. I wanted to see some more crazy, just insane traps and crazy situations. And uh, all three are in this film. All three deliver. We get to see more of Jigsaw. He gets, Tobin Bell gets to play his character, gets to flesh out his character some more. We do see some insane traps here, some better than others, but we see a lot of crazy stuff here. Very, very creative. And there's really two twists going on that you don't see coming at the end of this film. So that is what I really love about it. You know, I, I, and I literally, when I watched this, I said, like, well, something's going to happen. Something's got to happen that we don't see coming. But everything seems pretty linear. It seems pretty, 
pretty obvious what's going on here, uh, but obviously Jigsaw's got something up his sleeve, something crazy is going to happen, but what it was was something I had no idea about. No idea about. And then, of course, the other twist, again, spoilers here, about Amanda, who is also in there. Amanda is from the original film with the bear trap, and she was able to, to actually win the game and survive. It is found out that she is actually now Jigsaw's right-hand girl. And she is going to take over after he passes away, which looks to be pretty much happening. In fact, when I first saw this, I thought that Jigsaw had passed away at the end where he's there in, in, the, in the van and you can see blood everywhere and it looks like he had died. And I think it's just assumed that he died, but he has not passed away yet. We will get more of him in the, the next few installments, which I can't wait to talk about. But this film is very entertaining. Um, like I said, just at times, some of the acting, some of the teenagers, some of their actions, of course, they're stupid as can be. You know, some of that typical horror stuff where you just have to be dumb for anything to work. And these are some dumb kids. Right from the get-go, I mean, right from the get-go, Amanda, the only one who's been in this situation, saying, no, we need to do what he says. We need to follow the rules. And everyone else, ah, fuck that. I'm going to do whatever I want. And then the guy says, uh, oh, the key gets the key. The key. Do not try to open the door with this key. I'm, uh, I'm doing whatever I want. I don't care what he says. I'm not saying there's no one that dumb in the world, but I, I find it hard to believe <laughs> that, that that would have happened. Like, uh, come on now. I mean, these... Yeah, everything he set up. And then also, what are the odds that someone else had to be looking through the peephole? Because that's where the gun was placed. Someone was looking through the peephole and someone was turning the key. So it kind of had to work out pretty perfect. And it, and it did. And the guy, you know, one guy got, got, got killed there. But uh, to believe that someone would just immediately run over there with the key and try to turn it without having a conversation, without thinking about it, without letting a couple hours pass. And then, like, let's do it. And then you got the other girl where there's the, uh, the antidote uh, in there. There's a, a little case with two holes at the bottom. She just immediately, oh, look at this, sticks her hand right up there. Are you stupid? Like, they don't even hesitate. Like, everything that, like, like, even though they're seeing all the other people get killed at one after the other when they just do, when they just act without thinking, when they just do what the their first instinct is without considering, you know, hey, you're not supposed to do that. It's against the rules. They don't care. They just do it. And then no wonder they pretty much all die. So you got a room full of some of the dumbest teenagers ever, and it just starts to feel a little bit like, this is this is silly um, but other than that I mean that's really it I thought that uh, a couple of actions of the cop uh, of Eric Matthews beating the living hell out of um, jigsaw you know I, I like oh I don't know man I don't know that that doesn't seem logical the guy's got cancer he, he beat him to a pulp till he was almost dead I know he's trying to get his son back and I can understand you pissed at the dude and you would want to do that and you know you see the time running out and all that I don't know maybe 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 I just when I saw that happening I'm like ah they're going a little overboard there he's going a little overboard the guy's about to get killed he's about to kill the dude you're not gonna find your son if this dude is dead if you have any knowledge on how this guy operates you would know that the woman cop in this film who was saying no we need to just do what he says we need to just you know it, we would everything would have been fine but of course that would have been for a more boring movie so just a few things you know take me slightly out of the film like ah, i don't see that that doesn't seem like that's would re really happen that doesn't seem like this person would do that or behave this way it just seemed way not not just out of character out of humanity like, like that's insane especially the, the asshole xavier one of the kids one of the teenagers in there he i said i call them teenagers they're actually some of them are clearly adults in their 30s and 40s and older like like, like, like uh obi uh he He's obviously older guy, but anyway, Xavier looks to be in his 20s or something, but this guy's a complete psychopath. I mean, he's a psych, he makes Jigsaw look like a great guy. But uh, that being said, couldn't wait to see him, you know, get killed, which we eventually do, of course. But all in all, though, I thought that it had what I was looking for. It had an awesome twist at the end, a couple of awesome twists that I did not see coming whatsoever. The music is fantastic. We get that theme in there a few times. And, of course, like I said, a great gore, great traps, great stuff like that. All the typical stuff you're looking for in a Saw film is in here. Um, but 
for me personally, just for my taste, this is not one of my favorite in the franchise. I didn't like it as much as the original, and there's going to be more coming that are going to start to get better, and there's going to be more coming that are going to start to get significantly worse. But that's how huge franchises are. So those are my thoughts on Saw 2. Again, I thought it was fantastic. I just didn't think it was freaking awesome like the first one, but I do think it is definitely a great film, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. A great way to continue the franchise, a great way to find out about Amanda and what she He's been up to and we're going to get more answers to a lot of questions in the upcoming installments as we look forward to spiral next month and i can't wait so let me know what you think of saw 2 if you've seen it put your comments down below and if you're looking forward to more movie reviews and music reviews this is the place to be we're doing a bon jovi series going to get to some other bands as well and we're going to get to some other great horror movies and movies outside of the horror genre as well doing it all right here at Eric's house, hit the subscribe button, hit the thumbs up button. We're going to talk to you next time.